The goal for our program is to facilitate a meaningful learning experience and discussion that is engaging and insightful. The format for our event today will allow each panelist to share their experience on the topic of gaming. Each of our panelists will share what's working to improve learning and uh, retention, proficiency, and overall learner engagement. Once we hear from our panelists, we'll open up to the audience for questions. Panelists, please from re refrain from answering any of the questions submitted until the end of our program, where we'll open up to discuss openly with the whole group. Before we start with our panelists, I would like to introduce myself and Scrimmage. As a continuous learner, I feel engaged and empowered learning from the experience and wisdom of my network. The journey of development is a way for me to continue my own personal development while supporting others with their development and growth. I'm excited about joining the innovative and uh, collaborative team at Scrimmage. If you're not familiar with Scrimmage, our technology is a one touch point platform that nurtures and drives learner experience as either a standalone application or integrated with legacy systems and includes gamification. With over 2 million questions answered and games played on our gamification platform, Scrimmage is not only an early innovator of technology, but also a leader in the field. We offer a multitude of gaming options to fit each objectives. And your learners needs for knowledge re reinforcement, increased engagement and team building with easy to access data and analytics in real time. Let me know if you're interested in learning the results you can achieve with Scrimmage after our program today. Ana designs and delivers change facilitation and learning experiences that speak to the learner, meet the learners where they are and inspire people and organizations to reach for potential and create an impact. She applies developments in neuroscience, psychology, concepts of motivation and immersive learning to maximize outcome and performance at both personal and organizational levels. Anna has developed a number of frameworks that serve as practical and effective tools. Anna is an adjunct faculty at the NYU School of Professional Studies, teaching courses in instructional design and is a frequent speaker at various professional events. She has written articles on game-based learning, change facilitation, business thinking, and has a role of motivation in self-directed learning. With that, would you like to share your perspective, Anna? I would love to. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you very much. Nicole, thank you very much for this opportunity to share our work our, based on the research, experience, the, what we have developed, our experience working with different organizations. And um, I hope this, uh, what I'm going to share with you, will set the stage also, will make connection to what Mira and Natalie will share with you after my presentation. I'm Anna Samulkova, and um, I am the CEO and founder of Edelweiss Group. And I would like to take it maybe at a higher level to set the framework and the structure for what is it, what's important in looking at game-based learning and how to make it effective and how to really maximize the power and the value that game-based learning carries or can promise and, and help us deliver. So the benefits of game-based learning, and some of you may be new to the game-based space, some of you may have some experience, so some of this may sound familiar in the very beginning, the foundations that I will cover with you. But first and foremost, the benefits of game-based learning is the learner engagement, and we will talk more about that. Active learning and immersive learning. Game-based learning provides that opportunity to create immersive learning, which is one of the most effective ways to learn. Learning by doing, by doing is similar to immersive learning. The, the only difference is immersive usually uses some kind of scenario or an overarching simulation. And reinforcement of concepts learned. And one of the answers or responses to the question that Nicole posed to you all when you were logging in was, what are you looking for to achieve with the gamification or application of game-based learning? And it's learn the quick proficiency of the learner with the topic or skill that you're teaching. And it definitely depends on the learner engagement. So the effectiveness of learning, we can rephrase that the quicker proficiency in the skill or the topic that's being learned is the effectiveness of learning, how quickly we can teach our learners what we want to teach them. 
And one of the other things that I saw in those uh, in your responses is the learner engagement. And absolutely, the game-based learning provides uh, all the covers all the principles that are important in engaging the learner at the highest possible level. What we're going to focus today is on the learner engagement, and because that will drive our decisions on how we approach game-based learning and whether game-based learning is the answer in all of the situations. And the depth and the scope of game-based learning will also depend on our learner and what we're trying to achieve with them. When we talk about learner engagement, there are two specific areas that we identify when we teach how to design game-based learning or learning design in general or how when we work with organizations. The first one we look at is the obstacles to learning. We'll talk more about that. And the second is motivation. So let's talk about the obstacles to learning. The first uh, one really that we are trying to get as deep as we can on is the fear of failure. And to give you an example, the fear of failure, when people with no finance background come into a class to learn finance or business finance, there is a, an underlying obstacle to learn. It is not based on the capabilities, but it is based on some prior experiences with math. So most people that don't have finance background I would say people who say, I am not a numbers person, this is not for me, I really just need to learn it, but I'm not very comfortable with that. So that would be the obstacle to learning. That's and one, the first thing is the fear of failure. And the reason for that, again, is not a capability or ability to learn, but some prior experiences that get into our subconscious at some point in the past. And gain to help us to gain this learning, help us to really overcome this obstacle. An example, how we worked around that is we teach business acumen using a game-based approach, make it, making it very simple, very visual, game elements such as competition, such as surprises, wild cards, very visual engagement, very interactive. They put all of these fears aside, really freeing up our learner to focus on what's being learned in a very indirect way. And when we see that, the eyes are lit up and learning those concepts that they were afraid of. And we know that we, we hit the point we achieved what we were set to achieve. So the theory of failure is one of the first obstacles to learning. So other obstacles would be stress, content or subject, and time. So all of these things we'll look at in determining, all right, what is the modality that we're going to use in designing the learning? And game-based learning is one of the modalities. And a prior experience of prior experiencing of and of ineffective learning can also be an obstacle to learning. That's when your people are coming into the room and say, "Oh no, another training." So there's all the predefined lack of motivation to really go into that training. So game-based environment can spike this up very quickly. It's well done. So the game-based design itself has to be well done for all of these benefits of the game-based learning to work and be brought up to the highest power possible. Talking about motivation and the learner engagement, and this goes back to, this connects to the self-determination theory and to the work of Daniel Pink, who based on his research of what, on what was out there on motivation and how we frame this, how the, we use the concepts of motivation in our work. And there you can hear different terms and different wording for that, but the four key elements of game-based uh, motivation are the autonomy, which is my sense of choice, relatedness, my connection with others, mastery, which is my sense of challenge and growth, and a sense of purpose, why I'm doing this for, not just in the immediate purpose, but really what's beyond that. And it is the purpose that brings all of the elements of motivation together. Why are we speaking about motivation in when we talk about learning? Because the level of initial motivation impacts how we design learning. If the motivation is low, then we have to be a little more creative how we approach things. On another side, game-based learning environment helps us to support all of these principles of motivation. Game-based learning, if well-designed, it creates a sense of autonomy because, because the players or the participants, they have choice in what they're doing with the game. 
whether through um, some decision making trees that can happen or through wild cards or throwing the dice. So they have some sense of what's happening with them. The sense of relatedness. This is mostly realized when we have a few players in the game. And the game itself cannot be just for one player, right? So there has to be some community, whether it's a virtual, whether it's against some wild, uh, pl uh, some unknown players in the space, or it's a board game where everybody's in the room. So it does create a sense of there are more people than myself in this learning environment. Sense of mastery, absolutely just moving through the levels of the game. From that creates a sense of mastery and also a sense of challenge. We all like challenge. And the sense of purpose is either the goals of the game, very, at a very primitive level, the goals of the game could be earning the most amount of money or finishing the whole trip first. At the better level of the purpose is when we have cooperative games instead of competitive games, is when we have a common goal for the game, let's say, to save the whole universe from the um, epidemia of some diseases. So that would be higher purpose, and everybody's pitching in to achieve that goal. So that's where we achieve a higher sense of purpose within the game-based environment. Now let's talk a little bit about modes of learning and delivery. There, is a, there are a bunch of different ways, and this is not exhaustive at all, but just to give you an idea of the magnitude of how we can deliver learning, and I would think that most of you are familiar with that, is we have self-paced with some facilitation, we have self-paced virtually, which is e-learning, facilitated virtually, facilitated in person, and all kinds of combinations, individually and, and in teams. And then we have uh, the highest risk of disengagement, impact um, actually is, exists in the self-paced virtual environment. Why do we need to know that? It's because when we design modalities of learning or when we decide on a modality of learning, whether it's a game-based or some other form, we want to understand the environment of learning and the mode of delivery. So if it's a high risk of disengagement, we have to include some engaging elements and game elements or gamification elements, which is not a, a true game base, but just elements of the game, which is leaderboards and points. We need to include that to engage the learner at a higher level. In the self-paced virtual environment, they're just going through the clicks. This is what happens for really, to really, for them to learn what we are teaching them, there has to be an engagement. If we combine everything that we heard so far, and we, I mentioned before that, well, before I mentioned before that, in, in order for us to design, to decide, and the modality of learning and game-based learning is one of the most creative modalities of learning. We really need to understand the learning of the environment, and there are two dimensions here. One is the obstacles to learning and engagement, which is the vertical part. And here we have the fear of failure, stress, time, mode of delivery, whether it's a self-paced location of learners, location of learners can be co-located, no co-location at all, in different places, different geographies, all, kind, all kinds of permutation of that. Content can impact obstacles to learning. I'll give you an example of financial aspects, but it also could be highly technical or compli totally compliant kind of required courses. Low internal motivation, initial forward or reason, and fixed versus growth mindset. So these are our obstacles to learning. And on the horizontal line, we have approaches to learning design. They can be game-based learning, game elements, collaboration, team activities, social learning, and variety of model, modes and delivery. The far out we go to the right, the more creative we are engaging, the more um, game-based or simulation-based uh, activities we need to incur. And to bring all of the charts together, it, to, to do that, let's, the higher the obstacles to learning and engagement are, the more creative we need to be with our learning design. The more, thing, the more model, the, the modalities like game-based learning we need to engage with to achieve our learning objective. But also here, we want to map out and make sure we're not overdoing. What usually happens, and one of the, one of the um, uh, constraints and the risks with game-based learning is really putting all of these resources into game-based development, whether it's a 3D, computer-based, it could be pretty expensive, could be very high cost of develop, time of development, and uh, do we really need that? 
yes, it's fancy, yes, it looks great, but do we really need that, all of that to achieve our objectives? This is what we were, we want to optimize our needs with what with the approaches that we're taking to deliver that learning. If, let's say, our obstacles to learning are balanced, then we can have just a medium kind of balanced approach to learning. It doesn't, it can be just engaged, experiential learning and collaboration. We may not even need game-based learning. If the obstacles to learning are high, and I'm on the green quadrant here, but we're not really doing anything, we're just doing the minimum on collaboration, then that learning may be ineffective because we're not overcoming obstacles to learning, whatever they may be. If the obstacles to, lear to learning are low, and I'm in a blue quadrant, I'm going into the right, the lower section, and we're doing all of these fancy things with game-based learning. Again, it can range from a 3D kind of computer game, highly interactive, a lot of dynamics, a lot of design, a lot of graphics, to a very basic board game, right? The ranges can be. So we're at the high end of being so creative, putting a lot of funds into this. We're overdoing things. We, with our understanding of the learner, we don't need all of that. And, and when we are, when we experience obstacles to learning at a high level, I'm in the orange quadrant, our approaches to learning design have to be highly creative for the learning to be effective. So this is just an example. You could use it as a framework for mapping out your learning environment, your learners, and the approach to take. And again, the game-based learning can vary from a very simple board game, some elements of gamification, points, uh, points, rewards, and things like that, to a very sophisticated 3D, um, 3D environment. I would also like to bring up here how game-based learning can help us to facilitate change. We are seeing a lot of change throughout all of the organizations at the multitude levels at the magnitude of speeds uh, increasing exponentially. And within our framework, actually, the game-based learning plays a role. This is what we teach organizations to create and consult and also create for organizations, whatever the situation may be. So in this framework, seeing changes and opportunities, the first three steps is, are the foundations. But the really where it takes place, the game-based learning, is in transforming to the opportunity. And this is where HR and L&D professionals can play a tremendous role in supporting and empowering people and employees to really be, to really transform their, how they respond to change. So we go to here, we work with um, mapping threats of the change, change outcomes, motivational, um, motivation mapping, but this is in designing learning experiences. This is where we can apply game-based learning by mapping out what are the obstacles to learning? What is the change environment? Is there a lot of stress? Is there a lot of resistance? So we need to make it fun for people. We need to make it more engaging. We need to make it more cooperative. So this is game-based learning can have a tremendous power and value for the organization during change. And we as learning design, designers can impact that. Um, in a very summative form here, we look at, in the change environment, we look at the content, we look at the mode of delivery and modality, and you can see game is one of them, right? So lecture would probably least desired, game and simulation would be the most desired to help people overcome those obstacles that they're experiencing during change and support them in creating own support system. And to sum up, in creating learning experiences, so this is a very simple framework that we teach to our organizations we work with, and I would like to share it with you. Uh, we work with it, we apply the same framework. Is under, the first step is understanding the learner and the organization, the environment, what is happening with the learner, who they are, what are the obstacles to learning, and what is the organization going through. And then we take a deeper dive in step two, we take a deeper dive into obstacles to learning, really understanding uh, what is happening. We, are, we take a look at the learning environment and we do mapping of the motivation, if, which elements of motivation are compromised in the current space and how can we support those elements or components of motivation with our learning design. And from step two, we look at the change environment. Is there a change happening? And in most organizations there is, and more than one change. And this is where we apply the framework of seeing change as an opportunity and use game-based learning to really create that spike and interest and bring people together and help them just learn because learning by itself creates positive neurons in our brain. 
And this is what we need during change, because change creates a lot of resistance, freedom, and impact. And, and learning is one of the things that help people transform their response to change. And based on all of these analysis, we use approaches to learning design. Whichever model you use for learning design, whether it's ADSM, action learning, this framework, it can be embedded, can be coordinated with that, because really it's, it is the framework that steps in at the design level. And what we want to make sure with the game-based learning is that one of the risks with game-based learning is really not achieving learning objectives, deviating, getting sidetracked with all of the fancy things. So you want to stay on track with the outcome and really keeping in mind the learner's environment and how they feel and what they think. So this is it for me. I hope that was helpful and valuable for whatever initiatives or projects you're working on. If you do have any questions, because I did share some research and some some developments here, please reach out to me. Nicole, thank you again for the opportunity. Thank you, Anna. Kara Jerman. As a learning solutions architect, she leads the digital learning strategy for one of the leading IT service organizations. The learning program she has designed cross data science, deep specialization, and various digital skill development programs, and has received recognition in the learning and development industry by earning nine Brandon Hall Awards from 2014 through 2017, an ATD Excellence Award in 2017, and special cita citations in NASCOM in 2017. These awards recognize these programs for best impact results shown and, and also gamification. With that, Mira, would you like to take it away? Thank you, Nicole, for the opportunity. Uh, extremely excited to share the learnings that we have in rolling it out, right? And Anna, thank you for the wonderful context setting. I think we have gone a lot, uh, you initially said, we'll set, set the basics, but I, I got to learn a few things from your presentation as well. How exciting it would be to include gamification in change as well and how it will fire the past to neurons and it will help the overall change management. Thank you, Anna. Um, I, uh, uh, for today's discussion, I had planned to focus on uh, the fundamentals of uh, gamification in learning and development and why we would need it, uh, right? extension of Anna's uh, discussion again. Um, are you able to see my screen? Uh, yeah. Yes, we can see your screen. Okay. So when we look at learning, right, typically within an organization, what is the reaction that we would want from our learners, from our associates or the employees? Bored, excited, challenged, uh, what is this? Or happy, right? And we would want them to be happy and engaged. And that is where gamification would definitely help, uh, right? And why do we need to gamify learning in, in specific instances? First, it will help us in the motivation because we are providing certain challenges or goals, targets to achieve. And that kind of uh, provides an extensive motivation for people on the wall or uh, on the fence, right? We'll be able to convert them easily. And for engagement, it'll for people who really want to learn, who are all, already motivated, again, to help them sustain and take it till the completion. Gamification will definitely help you in engaging with your uh, audience. Yes, have, you feel happy when you're engaged and brain absorbs more. So the retention also increases. And finally, we can apply it in various scenarios. It doesn't have to be always jazzy, flash, or immersive gamification. It could be slight tweaks in the way we approach, the way we design. Um, so how can we combine game and learning? So we look at the game uh, for the learning components that we need. So on the left side of the screen, which are necessary for higher retention. Mira, we're having some problem with your audio. Oh, is it better now, Nicole? This is better. It was it was stretching out, and I apologize, everyone. Um, Mira is joining us from India, so I don't know if it's a, a global issue, but it just was pausing on words for a minute there. 
Oh, I'm sorry. There has been a, a bit of rain here. I think that's causing the network issue as well. So yeah, uh, I was uh, saying how we can combine the gaming components to the fundamentals of learning, the elements that we look for in a uh, in learning. All right. So on the left side, we are seeing the uh, fundamentals of the learning elements and what will map to the gaming elements. So we need motivation, we need relevant practice and the feedback or the retrieval aspects. These to be imbibed in our learning design for an effective retention and the learning transfer, as we say. Right? And from the gaming elements for motivation, we use the leaderboards or points or goals to help them stay focused and achieve that level right? for the sense of achievement. And the practice can be designed in the game itself by having, say, if you ha you can clear this level only when you do certain tasks, right? So that will help them keep trying. So if by design, we can have the practice enabled in the games. And the feedback, again, by having certain levels, either you move up a level once you complete it, so which means uh, whatever I'm doing, the task I'm doing, whether it is right or wrong, is, again, assessed through a, a gamified approach and by having right design for repeating the steps again the retrieval can also be designed so these are few fundamental elements how the gaming can help in effective learning transfer and retention yeah so in our organization when we launch uh, when we gamify few, uh, few of the solution designs we look at it as three different broad categories Right. One is the structural gamification where there is no change to the, we don't make any alterations to the basic course that we have, but we kind of spend to complete a specific program campaign, what is digital or get to know most of the emerging trends or topics. We associate few points to each of the course material or within a long winding program, again, we can we give points or digital badges, and that kind of motivates the learners to collect more badges and points. So we keep publishing leaderboards, and that is a simplest way of gamifying without altering the content, right? Not much of a time or effort intensive or even cost intensive approach. The other is the content gamification. We have had uh, scenarios where we have detailed out missions right like uh, fbi investigation missions we have the characters enacting and then through the and a very immersive platform where they have to crack the code by solving few uh, by clearing few assessments or by uh, through the practice practices or completing certain courses so once they do these certain tasks they'll get a key to unlock and then the story would be to identify the rogue within the fbi or identify the mole within the fbi or help us solve one of the satellite problems or anything, right? So that is other end of uh, gamification, extremely immersive. The one, this one is again uh, a game-based learning where we use most of the, uh, we make it a self-contained game itself. So instead of just a specific challenges or stories, we stretch it and then we give them a complete ecosystem. So we, we leverage most number of elements in this approach. So we have had uh, examples, scenarios, and success in each of the approach, depending on the need, uh, right? and also alluded to when to apply gamification or when not to apply gamification. So I'd like to focus on a few quick rules of thumb or how to proceed if you want to get started tomorrow. Right? One is start with the end in mind. So what do you want to achieve? Is your um, end goal to uh, increase adoption, or is your end goal to increase the capability in a shorter duration, or what is it that you want to do, All right? Or is it the overall skill upliftment? So depending on what is the outcome that we are expecting, we can choose appropriate gamification method. Again, uh, it's it's primarily the head fake for the players so that they don't realize or they don't see the burden of learning. And in the process, we should still focus on the content mastery and the job performance and not lose out in the overall gameplay, right? We do not want a scenario where the game is very elaborate, but then the focus on learning or what their key takeaways is minimized because they're concentrating too much on the game. So we have to make right balance there. And yeah, the 
PBL, as we call it, the points, badges, and leaderboards is done and dusted. It has come to kind of a, a stagnant, stagnant point where people are easily seeing through this. Okay, I get points, fine, but what were the points? Unless there are some actual rewards uh, that is waiting for them in when they convert the points or badges, people are not uh, people are able to see through this. So we may want to do a little beyond um, uh, points, badges, and leaderboards, maybe levels or provide them tools, provide them lifelines, how they can address. And the final one, I think the goal should be to move towards collaboration from competition while game by its nature will make us compete against each other. But if we can actively design it in a way that they collaborate with each other or they seek help and achieve the goal collectively, because that is how most of the time work gets done at workplace. We are not performing individually. We try to seek help and then we work together in achieving a common objective. So if we can design the go uh, game accordingly, I think that will be the ultimate uh, aim we would probably want to solve. So that's the quickly I wanted to share from uh, a lot of experiences that we had um, done within our organization. And thank you, Nicole. Thank you, that was great. So Natalie Shelton is our next panelist. Natalie is a senior planner currently involved with large scale instructor led and in dealership training programs within all US and global markets for infinity. She is an experienced professional with 12 over 12 years of diversified training, HR and communications experience in the corporate and education communities. Natalie believes that an individual's ability to expand his or her knowledge set and endeavor for lifelong learning, learning is vital to long-term success. Natalie has worked extensively in the education and training industries. In addition, she is a trained specialist in various e-learning platforms and content development programs. Her most recent accomplishment includes the launching of a new gamification component to the online training program for employees in Infinity's U.S. markets. Natalie's educational background includes a BA from the University of Mississippi and an MBA from Bellhaven University. With that, Natalie, would you like to take it away? Sure, and thanks, Paul, for the opportunity um, to speak to the group today. And I would also like to say, Mira and Anna, I learned a lot of information um, from you. You guys gave a really great foundation of, um, of gamification. Um, so in regards to um, what I do in Infinity, um, as Nicole previously stated, I am working with Infinity um, in our corporate headquarters in Franklin, Tennessee. And currently I work with a, a, a large scale instructor led and in dealership training program for our US global markets as well as our US markets and global markets. And right now we currently have a focus, I'm focusing on our US markets. And we recently kind of introduced a new component with game based learning for Infinity. Um, this is something that is new for us. Um, we actually introduced launched this last year. So it's completely new for um, Infinity USA. Um, and with this, basically, we launched a new component in which we call it Infinity University Arcade. And we launched this to kind of help increase our employee achievement in a, as well as engagement in a more interactive learning format as opposed to the more traditional e-learning course. Um, from our previous presentation, Anna's presentation, you learned that e-learning courses tend to have a high level of disengagement um, from employees. So we wanted to introduce some type of component that could counteract that. And so when we did that, we thought about ways, how do we like to learn? How do people, how do our employees, especially adult learners, how do we like to learn? And so we kind of identified those ways and we identified the fact that we're sometimes com competitive, uh, we're motivated by challenge. Uh, we like to receive rewards and recognition for our accomplishments. And so we thought that gamification, game-based learning would be a great opportunity for us to do that. Now, working in the automotive industry, it's a very unique industry um, because it's just a unique industry. You have several different types of unique circumstances and obstacles in the automotive industry. First thing is the fact that we have new vehicles on new vehicle lines and constantly changing information in regards to our vehicles uh, with upgrades and so forth. 
So that was one obstacle we had to kind of identify um, for gamification with infinity. Another obstacle that we identified with trying to introduce this um, to our employees is the fact that in the automotive industry, we have very, we have limited time restraints. Um, like I said, we work with our U.S. markets in the dealership, as well as our, our field employees. And so the time restraints are very, our time restraints, are, they're very limited in regards to the amount of training um, that they have, the amount of time that they have for training. So we identified that and we thought that, okay, gamification would be a great opportunity to kind of get our employees engaged, actually introduce them to various things in regards to our products and just a, a new learning platform and a new environment for them to learn about infinity and the product. And so we thought this would be a great way to motivate our employees and to really help them become more knowledgeable on infinity as well as our vehicles. So with that being said, we took this gamification um, component and we actually tied it into our current um, online training that we have, our typical e-learning courses. We kind of tied that all into our online learning um, component that we have. And then we also tied our game-based learning into an incentive program that we offer for um, various employees of Infinity. And um, so with the games that, with the game-based learning that was created, uh, we basically used some elements of structural gamification with points and leaderboards and different var various levels um, of achievement. And so points are awarded for gameplay, earned points, are used for various employee incentives. Um, so that has been really, really motivating for our employees because at one point in time, they would earn these same types of points for possibly maybe like certification courses, but they didn't know what they could possibly do with them. And so we kind of tied them into some types of incentive-based um, award for our employees as well. So we did that with our certification as well as the gamification that we introduced. Um, so this is a very early project that we have. We're very, this is very new for us. We just started this last year. Um, currently, in our Infinity University Arcade, we have approximately 10 games, um, called games, they are in our arcade. And the games mainly focus on our Infinity vehicle line. Um, we do have additional games that are planned for the future that will continue to focus on our new vehicle models as well as the new technology um, that Infinity has within our vehicles as well, and other topics um, in regards to the company. Um, we have found that our, comp that our employees are very, very excited about this new element. We have a lot of positive responses. And in regards to that, we've noticed that we have an increased number of employees that are achieving higher levels of certification and proficiency um, for our, on our company and its products. Another thing that we have noticed, we have noticed that the employee engagement has increased as well because employees are now motivated to actually go to our online learning environment and go to our learning management system and actually participate and utilize the games that are there. Um, so that has also increased. So it has most definitely increased employee engagement and also, we have noticed that it has increased our retention, increases um, employee learning retention, because employees now have a new platform, a new option of using this platform as an avenue to review information in regards to the product details. Instead of repeating an entire e-learning course just to review I, um, information in regards to one of the vehicles. So they're more likely to go and actually participate and participate in our gamification. So with Infinity, like I said, this is something that is really new, but it's really exciting. We do have future plans with Infinity to kind of expand our arcade, to have more games there for our employees and also increase our topics. Right now, we're just kind of using this in our US markets, but we do plan on expanding this into our global markets as well. So it's just a really great, engaging, and interesting, and like a really interactive way for our employees to learn about Infinity, to learn about Infinity products, 
to just basically increase their levels of you know, achievement, um, their levels of product knowledge and so forth. So that's just a short, um, just a short summary of what we are doing here in Infinity. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me at the end during the Q&A session. And I will give it back to you, Nicole, and thanks for the opportunity. Awesome, thank you so much, Natalie. Katie had submitted a question um, that they're seeing increasing younger employees, millennials, who are having a hard time seeing past the competition aspect and wanted to have your ideas on how to overcome those types of problems. Yeah, sure. So if them ask more questions, right? I, we felt seeking information is one way of uh, initiating the collaboration. So we designed challenges where uh, we would by design have the participants reach out to others and get a few of the clues or get some uh, information from them. And second is we also incentivize people who are most um, actively helping others. So these two things we had leveraged and kind of worked well for us. Anna, did you want to share anything extra to that or you have any insights there? Uh, yes, absolutely. And I, uh, yes, what um, Mia is suggesting or they tried is uh, goes along with um, with uh, our experience as well. It really, it's not, it may not necessarily be with the younger generation, but it also can vary based on the role. For example, those who are in the sales uh, role, they may like more competitive environment for the game-based learning rather than cooperative. In this case, actually, it can be a combination of team activities, as Mira suggested, and we also, in this case, will recommend using both com competitive and cooperative elements together. And if we, let's say, if the generation, the, whatever the participants, whoever the participants are, if they're looking for more competition, maybe it's just a different way of pos positioning their cooperative game. It depends on what the situation is, but there are different, uh, different options. Awesome. Natalie, would you like, like to add any insight there? Yes, I would. Um, as far as um, with Infinity, currently um, we are kind of using it for our sales consultants and so forth within our dealerships. And so the competitive aspect is a really great one. It's one that they are kind of used to within the environment that they are in. Um, we are going to expand this program to include more so um, maybe like our service employees as well, to where they service employees, they tend to work in a more collaborative effort um, and collaborative environment. And so we will kind of move towards that direction. But right now, um, we are currently kind of focusing on our sales consultants. And they're so, they're so involved in, in such a competitive environment already. And so this kind of really motivates them, this, this format that we have now currently. So, Nelly, I'm going to start with you on this question. And, and we'll switch up the, the order a little bit. But one of the things that I continually hear from people I'm meeting with is they're running into a challenge with acceptance by not only all generations, but it might even be personality styles within the organization. So managers who don't want their employees playing games, per se. How do you address that within your organization? Well, within our, well, within our organization, unfortunately, we don't have that much of an, we don't have an issue in regards to that because Infinity is very, very well known for being very innovative, um, very advanced. And so we encourage um, that type of environment. We encourage um, different modalities as far as learning and different formats. And so that's something that we're always trying to be um, ahead of the pack in regards to like the technologies for vehicles. But we also want to incorporate that in the way that our employees learn. So this has not been something that has been really been a challenge for our company currently, because we're always trying to move forward to the very next thing. Um, the very next great thing in regards to like gamification or virtual reality and things of that nature. So that's something that's been really a positive element for our company. They are really encouraging that. Now I will say that um, with the workforce that we do have, we do have some employees that are not necessarily used to that particular format. And so not really used 
not really used to that format. And so it's just a matter of basically training and getting them accustomed to it. And so they have actually truly enjoyed it as well. So um, our learning management, learning management system and so forth has been around for quite some time with Infinity. We're just trying to find different ways of making it fresh for our employees, make it more engaging and more interactive. And so far, we've had a lot of positive response in regards to it. Awesome. Anna, have you run into that as a challenge, or how would you address that? Nicole, we have not run into that uh, challenge. So I, would, I think Natalie's response covers pretty well what the, what the, the solutions. Sure. Mira? Yeah. So, uh, I mean, our organization is of size 250,000, and we have people across multiple generations as well, right? So initially we thought a gamification is for millennials or the young crowd and when we launched it we uh, when we try started trying at that rung of the uh, hierarchy we saw that not while people were interested they were uh, there was a bit of reluctance right when we did a deep study we found that the supervisors are not seeing this as a learning they were seeing it more like a game right then we started realizing okay because the people at higher levels have not had the taste of this different way of design. So we started introducing this gamification at various levels, not just at the millennials, right? So once they realized, okay, this is a headway concept, this is engaging and it is helping them to absorb a lot more and faster. So they started supporting their uh, team members as well. So it wasn't seen as a game, as a taboo, but then they started encouraging. So that was one of, of the challenges we faced when we rolled out initially. And that's, that's what I'm hearing and I love your approach. I think that's a very smart way to address it is, is, a, is going that multi-level approach. What's been the return on investment? Are you seeing a more immediate application of knowledge than your more traditional models with classroom hands-on type practice? Anna, do you wanna start with that one? Sure, um, the return on investment let me just uh, read that question. Yes, we have certainly seen that it, it all depends on how the game-based learning is designed. And return on investment it can come and measure be in all kinds of shapes and forms. So I really would like to cover the second part of the question, the immediate application of knowledge or the skills. Yes, because the game can only can teach not only the knowledge, but within the game, you can also practice skills. And that's one of the things that we teach, and that's one of the things uh, we apply in the games that, game-based learning that we design. Absolutely. Because of the engagement, because of the emotional engagement or engagement at the emotional level, there is a, there is a higher level of inspiration for the participants to go out and, and practice that. The challenge is whether what we taught in the game really is important for what they do in the actual workspace. So it's tying back to the business goals, tying back to what the learning outcomes should be. But yes, if the game-based game learning is designed well, participants do go out and apply those skills right away and the practice. And there are some way, there could be some ways to reinforce that, again, with some game elements post the actual formal learning experience. Natalie, sure. any thoughts um, yes. on investment uh, or um, that, that increased a quicker proficiency? Yes, most definitely. Um, with us, we have seen um, higher levels of achievement as far as certification. And with my organization, we have different levels of certification. And so with us introducing game-based learning, we're noticing that we have more employees that are actually trying to achieve higher levels of certification. And so as opposed to what they were achieving prior to game-based learning being introduced to our employees. So that's something that we're really excited about. And also, like I said, it's also driving our employees to utilize our um, learning management system, our online um, environment that we have as well. And so we're really seeing that. And in addition, we also have um, in dealership training, but we're noticing as a result of the gamification that we have, employees are really actively engaged in it. And by, by the time they actually participate in the in dealership training, the instructor-led training, they're very knowledgeable 
on the content. They're very knowledgeable on the different vehicles and, and things of that nature. And so that's coming from them having the opportunity to be able to participate with the various games that we have. So we're really noticing a great um, an increase in engagement with our, with our employees with this. So it's been great so far. Mira, do you have any input on the return on investment or quicker proficiencies? Yes, absolutely. I agree with Natalie, right? So two scenarios, both in technology as well as in leadership development, what we have observed is the higher level of certifications. We had even done a control group study where we had uh, the same learning resources where one group went through it and then attempted the certification and then the other group went through this gamified approach and then attempted the certification. So we, we saw that 95% of the group which went through the uh, gamification approach were able to clear the certification as opposed to 35% from the other group, right? And this is with the same learning resources. It's only with the gamification, they, because of the way the game was designed, they were able to practice and apply and then uh, get themselves ready for the certification. I think it ties very neatly to what Anna said about fear of failure, right? So you have a non-threatening environment to practice and then you appear for certification. It definitely helps. Definitely. One last question before we, we wrap up today. Brian submitted a question. I don't know if this is, well, he, he was asking about the application of gamification on the front end of recruiting. If um, you have any experience there, having candidates perform competency games like case studies, Excel games, hackathon coding to maximize candidate experience along with removing the majority of cognitive biases. Any experience there from any panelists? I was not directly involved in, uh, sorry, in recruitment, but I know our organization uses a lot of these hackathons and uh, similar simulations for recruitment. I do not have any metrics to support. Sorry. Yes, we do. Uh, this is Anna. Would you uh, recommend in sort of situation again? There should be some trigger or some need of what game based or game based environment would be considered. If there's um, one of the reasons here, I see is the to remove majority of cognitive biases. Yes, absolutely. For that, game based space would be very applicable and would be very effective. And games can actually can actually help to look at some other aspects of the candidates um, of the candidates um, either patterns or preferences and all of that can be applied in the game and we simulation is a version of the game with the exception that a simulation does not carry like game-based uh, elements such as points and leaderboards and things like that so simulation is one of the things that we do develop for assessment of skills and simulation based because it does create a real real kind of feel for an, an environment where the potential candidates would be making decisions. Natalie, have you had any experience from the recruiting standpoint, especially within sales where you're, you're you focus your gaming? No, since this is a relatively new um, program for us, we have not had any experience, current experience with that, but I do foresee that happening in the future as we continue to expand our program. Well, we're at the top of the hour and I appreciate each of our panelists participation. Before we close up, I, I would like to give you a moment to give any kind of final thoughts now that you've heard each other and kind of answered some of the questions that went out there. And we'll start with Natalie first. Um, any final thoughts or comments before we depart for the day? Um, I would just like to once again like thank you for the opportunity and in regards to game-based learning I would suggest to you guys to the group to not be afraid to try things try to think outside of the box in regards to game-based learning and the way that we approach our employees in regards to learning um, you would be surprised um, the in regards to the reception that you would receive with gamification and game-based learning we were ultimately kind of overwhelmed with the response that we received with this. Um, our Nissan counterparts had been actually participating in this um, before us. And so we saw such positive results with Nissan. And so Infinity also decided to participate in this as well. So just don't be afraid to kind of try new and great and innovative things in regards to the way that our, your employees learn, because you'd be surprised 
with how much they would really love to have the opportunity to participate in programs such as this, such as game-based learning and gamification. So just always kind of keep your, keep just an open mind. Thank you. Anna? And uh, I can only second uh, Natalie's uh, suggestion and advice here. Natalie, thank you. You really brought it up to a point here. Guys, just uh, go out, ex experiment, as Natalie suggested. It doesn't have to be a fancy game. Just uh, even, uh, even an off-the-shelf game can, you, can be used for learning purposes. With a little bit of creativity of changing some clues, changing some decision-making, you can use an off-the-shelf game to teach some skills whether competitive or cooperative. It doesn't have to be fancy games. Start very simple, sticking out some pieces of paper and just uh, enjoy it. The game-based environment does make a difference for the learners. And uh, Mira's uh, connection went bad uh, again. So she, she would just like to use gamification with caution, leverage the matrix shown by Anna and use it at the right level. And I love, I love the thing of don't be scared to try it. I think uh, like Mira had shared, they did a controlled group side by side, one that used, utilized gaming and one that did, didn't. And that might be the way to start, especially if you're struggling with providing that response to return on investment um, question that is presented from leadership is really just start off small, start with control groups and, and show them what it, what it actually, what kind of impact you can make right out of the gate. So thank you everyone for participating today and for the questions that were submitted. We have uh, two, two conversations scheduled out in September, one based on workforce agility. We're going to talk about what your organization is doing to help employees be positively engaged in complex, rapidly changing conditions. And then the second conversation on the 20th is going to be on talent acquisitions impact on turnover. I'm really intrigued by what's going to happen there. So um, please join us in the future. If you have any ideas for upcoming topics you'd like to hear more about, please let me know. If you'd like to be a panelist and share your experience, um, let me know that as well. I draw from those in my network to share in a peer-to-peer -peer environment. And thank you again, everyone, for participating. I hope you have an amazing day.